Okay, so we're going to go quickly through uh, a, an example where we are determining the domain in the range, but we're going to write it using both inequality notation and uh, bracket notation, otherwise known as interval notation. So um, we've seen this before with uh, equations, where if I gave you something like y is equal to the square root of x, we were able to look at this and say, I'm only allowed to input 0 and positive numbers, which means negative numbers are not a part of the domain. Right, so the domain would be, for this would be written as something like x is greater than or equal to zero, right? If I wanted to describe the numbers that I'm allowed to plug in, right? So with a graph, we're kind of just showing the values instead of giving you an equation to think about. We're just showing you, here's what I was able to graph. And so we're going to do the same thing, okay? So what I'm going to do is take a look at my x-axis, okay? And I'm going to think about what values this graph is um, touching, okay? So if you notice, the very left-hand end of this graph is right here, Okay, which is at negative 8, okay? and the very positive right-hand side is at positive 8. Okay? So it looks like there is a graph everywhere between negative 8 and positive 8. Right? If I go over to 10 or over to negative 10, the graph doesn't exist over here on either side. Right? So the interval that this graph exists on is between negative 8 and positive 8. Okay? So the way that I'm going to write that in inequality notation, we're going to say negative 8 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 8. This is our way of saying everything that is between negative 8 and positive 8. Okay? So with the range, we're going to do the same thing, except instead of looking at how left and right it goes, we're going to think about how high and low it goes. So the highest point is right here, which is at positive 4. And then my lowest point down here is at negative 5. Okay? So it looks like it goes as low as negative 5, as high as positive 4. So again, I'm just going to write this using an inequality by saying that my smallest value is negative 5. You always want your smallest value on the left. And I'm going to say negative 5 is less than or equal to y, because this is on the y-axis, which is less than or equal to of positive 4, which is as high as it goes, right? So this is my way of describing that this graph goes from negative 8 to positive 8 on the x-axis and from negative 4 to positive 5 on the y, I'm sorry, negative 5 to positive 4 on the y-axis, okay? That is the domain in the range of this function that we've graphed, okay? Um, the bracket notation is just a different way of writing this. Instead of using inequality symbols, here's what we do. Okay? Uh, we're going to be dealing with less than or equal to's and less than's potentially. right? So here's how it works. If we, if we say a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to, we're going to use a square bracket. That's our, our way of saying include this value. If I use a less than or a greater than, right, which means not equal to, we'll use a rounded bracket. Okay, and so the way I'm going to represent this one, since they are both less than or equal to's for the negative 8 and the positive 8, is I'm going to use a square bracket to represent the negative 8. Write negative 8 okay, as the beginning value. Write 8 as the ending value. And then because this one is also included, this other endpoint, I'm going to use another square bracket. Okay, So for the range, it's the same thing. I'm just going to say I'm including negative 5 as my smallest value. And then I'm ending at positive 4 as my largest value. And I'm going to close that with a square as well. Okay, So this would be the bracket notation or the interval notation version of the same thing. These things mean the exact same thing. It's just one is written with inequalities and one was, is written with brackets. Okay, So let's just take a look at another problem. But we'll look at two more just to kind of get the idea about how this works. Okay, So scrolling down, here's our next problem. Okay, So again, if we're thinking about how far to the left and how far to the right does this go, Okay, we're going to, again, just look at this and say it looks like I go as far to the left as this point here, which looks like negative 6 or so. Okay, And this one, as weird as it sounds, you might be tempted to say, look, there's where it stops. But down here, the graph has an arrow. It's going to the right and down forever. right? So this one actually does not have a right-hand endpoint. It stops. It never stops. Okay. So the way I'm going to describe this one is saying this is negative 6. Right? So I'm going to say on the x-axis, as long as you are greater than or equal to negative 6, right, that's OK. Right? Everything on the positive side is eventually going, this line is going to eventually touch. Because there's no right-hand endpoint, I'm not going to have a second number here. It's just the things that are greater than or equal to negative 6. Okay? The range is going to be the same thing. Right? Again, if I'm thinking about top to bottom, okay, let me get rid of my domain things. Okay? I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to say, hey, this has a highest point. Right? I can definitely see that. 
this one stops he up here at y is 9, okay? But it goes down forever. This arrow also indicates that it's going down forever, right? So I can actually say, as long as you stay less than 9, right? If my y values are less than or equal to 9, then I'm going to be able to get to find the graph, right? All of the negative numbers that are even off this graph are eventually going to get hit by this arrow, okay? So you might be asking yourself, well, if in this first problem I had two endpoints and I was able to write two numbers in the bracket, how do I do that with just one? Here's how we do it, okay? So if I'm saying negative net uh, six is the smallest number and I'm going to write everything that is bigger than that, right? I'm going to make sure that negative six is first, Okay, I'm using a square bracket because it's a greater than or equal to I am including negative 6. Okay? And because I'm going in the positive direction forever, I'm going to use an infinity symbol. Okay? Infinity symbols are not values you can include because it's not a number. It's just like the idea that you can keep going forever. So I'm going to use a round bracket on this side to say there's nothing to include on this end. Keep going forever. Okay? Same thing's going to happen with the range, except in this case, we're going to say, you know what? The smallest number is like, we're going to, in the negatives forever. It's everything less than 9. So I'm going to actually say start at negative infinity. You can go all the way up until the highest value of 9. I want to include that 9, and I can never include any infinities because they're not numbers. right? So this would be my... Uh, interval notation way of just saying greater than or less than without actually uh, having a, an endpoint in one of the directions. Okay, So we have two types of problems now. We have one that has intervals um, where there's a stopping and starting point on both ends. We have problems where there is maybe only one. And the last possibility is uh, this situation uh, we, we have called a hole, right? So if you take a look at this problem, um, this one has a kind of a, a strange quirk to it. I have a regular old filled point here, okay, on the bottom, but I have an open circle on the top, right? This one is not filled in, okay? So that what this hole means is I want you to get as close to, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, negative five, right? I want you to get it as close to negative five as you want. So like negative 4.99999, that's okay. But once you hit negative 5, that value is not included, right? So this, so the way we're going to write this one is you say, we're, we're going to say negative 5 and numbers to the right of it all the way up until we get to 7 are okay, right? So my endpoints are negative 5 okay, and positive 7, okay? That's the other x end of my graph right here, okay? But I'm going to look at this and say, okay, I, we want to include the 7 because this uh, point is filled in, so I'm going to put a, a line under that less than sign, so it's less than or equal to 7, but I'm not going to put one under this negative 5 because that one is got a hole above it, right? So that's not a point that we want to include, okay? And then if I'm talking about top to bottom, I can see that this goes as low as negative 5 down here, right? And it goes as high as 7 on the y-axis as well. That's just a coincidence, right? So again, if I have these less than symbols, I'm going to put a Y in between them because this is the range. And in this case, it looks like the 7, it, the highest point, is the one we're not going to include. And this negative 5 is the one we are going to include, right? So I'm going to put a symbol under that one, okay? So in bracket notation, same thing. We're going to say, okay, I don't want to include this negative 5, right? I'm going to go from negative 5 up to 7. Those are the values that I start and end with. But I am going to include the 7, and I'm not going to include the negative 5. So it's rounded on the left and square on the right. The range will be the opposite. I am including the negative 5, so it'll be square bracket, negative 5 to include that one, comma. We're going to end at 7, but 7 is not included because it's a regular less than symbol, and so I'm going to do a round bracket there. Okay. So this is just, again, a way of, of uh, doing domain and range uh, just with a graph and not with the equation itself. Uh, and then uh, being able to express it both as an inequality or an interval using bracket notation.